junior fellowship. So the project was on the P extension and, uh, of porphyrins, and uh, we will try to do functional material, materials with it. So first thing uh, to introduce is what is a porphyrin? I don't know where is the pointer, okay. So what is a porphyrin? So porphyrin has its free base here. It's a macrocycle with eight beta pyrrolic position, four mesoposition, these ones. And what we call free base is when you have nothing inside the macrocyclic cavity here. So it's only hydrogen atoms. The advantage of this kind of uh, microcycle is that you can introduce a lot of different metals inside, and uh, which gives you metal complex, for example, with nickel, zinc, magnesium, copper, uh, and, and iron. So this uh, molecule exists in nature. You can see some example here in the chlorophyll, which can you, you, find, you can find it into a chloroplast, into uh, leaves, for example. And that gives the green color of... Uh, of plants, for example. Uh, another example is uh, we can find porphyrin in him, which also give the red color of hemoglobin. And so that's why numerous uh, uh, functionalization exists around this microcycle, as you can see here, for example. And uh, so the interest is to tune the porphyrin properties thanks to this functionalization around the microcycle. And uh, numerous researchers uh, are done on this uh, purpose, and also several applications uh, are developed uh, actually, currently. So the third thing is, uh, in the literature, we find uh, some example of fusion of porphyrins. Like this, you have, for example, two porphyrins, which are in an orthogonal manner, like this. And when you oxidize these two porphyrins, it is possible to add some additional bonds here between the, the two porphyrins, which makes the porphyrin coplanar. And the properties of this molecule are, are that they are more easily oxidized or reduced, for example. And uh, also it gives you, of course, more conducting material. And also we can see a redshift of the absorbance UV visible spectrum. So I, I shown you an example here. So when you have the absorbance here and the wave number, you can see that the, this one has this kind of uh, absorbance shape. And when you are increasing the number of bonds here, so when you are making a material fully coplanar, you shift these bands to the red. So you have a red shift towards the lower energy of the spectrum. Okay. So you can also have a, other aromatic fragments, such as this one, around the periphery of the macrocycle. So this represents uh, non-fused porphyrin, so it's orthogonal. So you have the porphyrin and you have different substituents that are orthogonal. And when you oxidize here the porphyrin and the fragments which are around the porphyrin, so you are making an oxidation carbon-carbon fusion, which makes here this kind of uh, molecules we fully planner and co-planner for conformation of the porphyrin. So the application of this kind of fused porphyrin are, for example, the near infrared electroluminescence displays. It, they are also used in disensitizer solar cells, also in photodynamic therapy and in uh, some research on molecular electronics. So the problem is there are several synthetic issues to, to prepare this kind of molecule because it is often necessary to, to use uh, an important amount of oxidizer uh, and uh, generally much more than stoichiometric, and that is more than the, the number of molecules of the, of the fused compound. Sometimes it needs acidic conditions, sometimes it needs high temperature, for example, 1500, uh, 500 uh, degrees. And the, another problem is that the fused produce are easier to oxidize, which can make their over-oxidation during the preparation process. And also, sometimes they are oxidizable by hair, so it's, it could be iso uh, difficult to isolate this kind of porphyrin. And also, the peripheral substituents, so these ones here, needs to bear electron-donating uh, groups, which means that they have to have a lot of electron inside. 
So our project uh, was developed first to, we try to, to make oxidative CN fusion of porphyrin solution. So it's not carbon-carbon bonds, but only carbon-nitrogen bonds, which was not developed uh, at the time. And uh, so it is exactly the same principle. So just we add this nitrogen atom here on the periphery of uh, the microcycle, and we try to oxidize only the porphyrin to make these new bonds here. You can see that this molecule is now coplanar, so fully plain, but also charged, so it's cationic. So in the literature, only one example ex exists uh, on this uh, CN fusion process. It's uh, from Howard. It's our uh, publication. The, the advantage is the fused porphyrin are positively charged here, so that means that they were more difficult to uh, oxidize, and uh, probably the, this will improve the selectivity and also these materials or these molecules will be stable uh, under hair. Uh, the imid base substituent here, so that means with the nitrogen here, the interest is that the fusion reaction will work at lower potential. That means that there is no need of electrodonating groupment fragment onto these uh, aromatic molecules. And so probably we can use milled oxidizer to make this kind of uh, products. So the second part of the project was to try to develop the oxidative C infusion and also infusion directly on the surface or conducting surface so, uh, on an electrode. So the, the principle is, is drawn here. You have to introduce here a grafting function, which is here an amino function. And on this arm, you have to put this imine function, which is here. You are transforming here this amino function into the diazonium one. You graft this molecule onto an electrode surface here by reducing this diazonium function. That means you give some electron to this, uh, to this part of the molecule. You release some nitrogen gas. And so intermediately, you are making a radical which can react and uh, coupled to the, to the electrode. And so after the inf when we have this uh, new material, we try to oxidize it and see if it is possible to fuse the, this material onto, directly onto the electrode surface. And after we want to try to see if it is possible to go back. And so in this case, we will have a half state of the material. And in this case, we could have uh, on state. So in to, um, we wanted to try to see if it could behave as a molecular switch. So you can see here briefly the synthesis of this kind of material is quite long, and we, uh, we, it, it was quite hard to develop. So in the first step, we're making, we make the microcycle here. We introduce in this position the ni a nitro function here. After that, we introduce this harm with the imine function here. And here we are blocking this position, which is called the mesoposition with a bromine, at, br bromine atom. We metallite this porphyrin here with zinc, for example, and after we introduce here, we replace this bromine atom with an amine function. We make the diazonium, we reduce this diazonium into a radical which can couple with the electrode surface here. So you can see here the properties of the porphyrin modified electrode. So we managed to deposit this uh, material onto an electrode surface. You can see here that the electrode, which is a conducting uh, transparent electrode, here is ITU electrode. Uh, we can see the, the porphyrin, which is deposited here, because we have a green color of uh, the, the electrode. You can also see that the properties uh, of hydrophilic uh, of the, the surface is uh, changing because before the deposition of the porphyrin, we have a uh, lipophilic surface here, so it's hydrophobic also because we have, when we add here a drop of water into the surface, we have a high contact angle. And here you can see that the water likes the surface because it is spread over the surface. And this is after deposition of the, the material of the porphyrin. And that means that probably the material is, is uh, much more uh, hydrophilic. So maybe it could be due to the addition of this pyridine molecule, which can make some hydrogen bond with water. 
You can see here a different uh, example by electrochemistry of the redox signature of the material. And it could depend on the charge that you pass to deposit the material. That means that the charge corresponds to the number of electron. And the higher the number of electron is, the higher the current you can see of the response of the porphyrin is, uh, is increasing. And this is, they are a real, a linear relationship. So, okay. And so after that, we try, when we uh, prepare this material, to see if it, is, it was possible to oxidize it on, directly onto the surface. And you can see here a voltammogram of the, the material. So when we start here, we are in this state. We are oxidizing the material. That means that we are removing one electron from this microcycle. After you can see that there is nothing here, and you, ha you have a new signal here, we could correspond to the formation of the diazonium here, of the pyridinium, sorry. So that means that this pyridinium is electron poor, so it's easily reducible, and that means that probably this reduction comes from this uh, pyridinium. So that's the proof, indirect proof, that the material is probably formed here. So that means that the connection is, is formed, but unfortunately, when you are doing multi-cycle here, we see that this, the process is irreversible. So after that, we see that the, as we see that the process was irreversible, we try to understand why. Probably because this position here is unprotected, and so as it is a radical uh, species which is formed by reduction, it is probably very reactive. And so what we think, what we try, is to protect this position on the, on the reactive uh, position. So we have to go back to the synthesis to make this new material. So we start from this one. Here we add just a methyl function here which protect this position. And so maybe I, I have no time to describe all the synthesis, but finally we obtain this brominated porphyrin with this harm here with the nitrogen, and in front of the nitrogen here, we have a methyl group which should protect the, the reduction. And so first, before going to the surface, we try to see if, it's, if it works into solution. So when we try to oxidize this porphyrin by uh, electrochemistry or even by chemistry, uh, the, it, it works, in fact, so we have to go further in the presentation. Sorry. And so we try to oxidize it. You can see here before the electrolysis that the first oxidation here is fully irreversible. When we apply the potential which corresponds to this one, after the electrolysis, you have the, this product is disappearing. And so you see here a new reduction process which corresponds to the formation and the reduction of this new pyridinium fragment. So that means that the fusion was very efficient. You can see also the red color of the starting product and the green color of uh, the fused product. Here, this is NMR spectroscopy. Maybe I have, don't have time to explain everything, of course, but you can just see this one. Here, for this starting molecule, you have just one signal here. And for this fused compound, as we have a loss of symmetry, you have two signals now, and you can see it just right here. So that means that NMR proved that this fusion uh, works. And as a conclusion, so we have developed an efficient multi-step synthesis. Uh, we show the first electrografting of porphyrin to be fused. We have a development of an efficient electrografting process, of course, but unfortunately, we have a degradation uh, that is uh, irreversible because probably the pyridine is not protected. And so we try to develop an alternative efficient multi-step which integrates the protection of the pyridine. And we have also a seno oxidative fusion test on zinc and nickel porphyrin. And the electrochemistry and MR spectroscopy confirm the efficiency of this fusion process. And also the purification of the CN fusion product has to be optimized. And the reductive CN infusion has still to be tested. And so I would like to thank all of my collaborators who work in this uh, subject and of course the funding and also you of course for your attention. Thank you. So thank you. Is there any question?
Yes. But, but, uh, well, the question is, what is the the time scale be between for the, this one for the switch? Yes. Yeah. For the moment, the switch is not uh, is not uh, feasible. Okay. In this case, for the so the first step is feasible. So the oxidation state, which goes to the on fusion state, is possible. But we never try to go into the, the other side. Okay, so the unfusion state. But, but do you have any target on the, the, the time the time for the? the yeah, in, in fact, the project is almost finished. But uh, of course, we need time to find some conditions which could give this uh, this uh, molecular switch. And we but are do you actively it trying will be to. Will microsecond? It will be nanosecond. It will be second Norm or normally. If we look at the first step, it took uh, maybe less than five milliseconds, in fact. The first step, so is the fusion state. We can measure it by cyclic voltammetry, and it takes only five milliseconds. So we can think that the, the other step, so the back step, will take this, uh, this amount of time. You, you mentioned uh, application in near infrared uh, electroluminescence system. Uh, it's probably of interest of several people in, in the room. Can, can you say a little bit more? So maybe I can jump on this question. So this would this will be one single answer. So yeah, there are many uh, live uh, cell follow-up by microscopy around the world and, and many applications that could be of interest. So in, in, in one word, do you think this porphyrin or one of your porphyrins might be of interest for live cell imaging? If we, if we think that, for example, if you start with this kind of product uh, from, the, from the right side, as when it is oxidized, you change the, the absorbance of your molecule, probably even the fluorescence of your molecule, maybe it could be interesting to inject this kind of molecules. I don't know if it's to toxic or not. But if it's not toxic, maybe it could... Uh, it could switch from a fluorescent state with a given wavelength, for example, and when it is oxidized, so into molecules, uh, into the cells where, for example, there is a, a lot of uh, ROS or oxidizing agents, so sometimes tumor has a, very, a lot of uh, amounts of reducer or oxidizer, so it depends. And so maybe it could be a kind of uh, molecules which can be tested in these conditions. Of course. So this you haven't done. So maybe you should. Yeah. Maybe we should discuss with people doing this kind of yeah, things. Yeah, you, you're right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you again. Yeah.